Welcome back to the Tetmoto channel and the next video in the Jarvis series. So we're making a robot and we're programming the robot and today's video is all about AI. Um, that's been in the news a lot recently um, and I thought it'd be a good idea to show you how to integrate OpenAI, uh, ChatGPT, AI into Jarvis. So all of the things we've been asking him to do in the past, you know, what's the weather, calculations, uh, turning lights on and off and things like that can be done with OpenAI. The beauty of it is, is that you don't know what the responses are going to be. Um, so you could say to it, what's your day been like? And it's going to give you a response that you haven't programmed. And, and that's, a, that's a beautiful solution. So we're going to jump in. I'm going to show you how to access um, ChatGPT and OpenAI in uh, Python, and then how to use the responses in your code for speech recognition. So let's dive into it. Okay, so the first thing you're going to need to do is install uh, the libraries that your computer program is going to need to run. Um, now, if you don't know how to install Python, you can go back to the first video, which I'll put a link up top here. Um, that will show you how to install Python in the first place. Uh, if you don't know about libraries and what they are and how to install them, uh, there's another video here and a link that will show you how to do that too. Okay, so I'm going to be jumping between me and my screen um, so you can see what I'm doing. Uh, the first thing we need to do is open up our command prompt. Um, if you haven't linked to your command prompt, you'll need to follow the video earlier on how to do that so that when you install things, you can do it from a path. Um, but the first thing we're going to need to install is pip install uh, openai. So that will install the openai library. Now the next one we need to install is uh, PYTTSX3, which is the library you need to run your speech recognition. If you're already following this series and you've got to this point, you'll already have this library installed, so you don't need to do this. Um, but for those of you that don't have it installed, it's pip install PYTTSX3. And then the last one you need to install is um, your speech recognition. So again, pip install speech uh, underscore speech recognition. Now, that installs all of your libraries. That's everything you need uh, to run uh, this piece of software. But there is one more thing you've got to do before you can get into the code, and that's get an API for OpenAI. And so we're going to jump to Google. We go to the OpenAI website, which is just platform.openai.com takes you to their website. Now, you will need to start your own account. Um, I'll leave that for you to do because it's, it's fairly straightforward. Uh, but once you've created an account, you come to their website here and you log in and you click on your username up here and then you just go down to um, View API Keys. Now, I've already got a key in here because I've been using this one already, but all you need to do is click Create New Secret Key, um, follow the instructions on the website, and then copy the key when you've got it because you'll need that key for your code. Okay, so let's get coding. Um, you'll notice that the platform we're using is uh, PyCharm. We're not using Atom anymore because um, Atom was pulled by the manufacturer, so that's not available anymore, so we're using PyCharm. Um, you can use anything. You can even use a text editor if you want to, to, to create your Python code, but we're gonna use PyCharm. So let's dive straight in. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put a line of uh, code there um, with a hashtag at the beginning um, so that it doesn't get sort of read into our program just to say what the code is and we're going to sort of add comments as we go through as well. So let's jump in. The first thing we want to do is import our uh, libraries. So we want um, our open AI library. Uh, we want um, our speech, speech recognition library and that is quite long so we can replace that as SR. And then we want import uh, PYTTSX3. Okay, now I put a capital I on that import. There we go. So, we've now imported all of our um, libraries. So the next thing to do is to set up our key. So let's just put a note up in here. Um, API key. And then we're going to write open AI which is the um, library, dot API underscore key. And then we're going to put our um, API key in there. Now, we're not going to um, put my API key in there for this video because I don't want everybody using my API key. But 
when you go to the website and you copy your API key, that's where it goes. So you'll have um, it just in there like that. So just cut and paste that out and put your API key in there. Now, that's your API key done. That's your connection to OpenAI sorted. How easy is that? Um, so next thing to do is to set up our text-to-speech. Um, so again, a comment so that we know what it is. And then we want TTS underscore engine equals PYTTSX3 dot initialize. And then we put two parentheses in. So that's your text to speech uh, setup. So, I mean, you can see how straightforward this is. All that coding we've done in the past, and we're replacing it with, with a minimal piece of code um, by using the AI. So, the next thing to do is to set up our function for speech. Now, I'm not going to um, type that out because that'll take too long. So I'm just going to paste that in from another piece of code. Um, and we need to set up our speech recognition. So I'll paste that in as well. Remembering all of your indents. So you must indent properly. And you'll notice in PyCharm that as you start adding things that call upon certain things, uh, your imports come live. So they're actually grayed out until you've actually called upon them, which is quite nice because it shows when your imports are being used. Uh, so you don't have uh, code in there that, that's not needed. Okay, so next thing to do is put a function in uh, which recognizes our voice and listens to our voice. You'll have seen all of this before from previous videos. Um, if you haven't watched the series, you can. There's a link there to the first one. Um, so that's the function for listening for our voice. And then we need to put in our piece for chat GPT. So let's copy that and paste that in. So this is our function for chat GPT. Now, all of this is going to be available uh, on the GitHub. So you can just download the entire code, uh, put your API in and then just run it and it'll work. Um, but if you wanted to decode it yourself and change wording and other bits and pieces in there, you, you can. Um, so in here, what we've said is um, Jarvis is listening for us. It's using our microphone as the source. So whatever microphone you have set up on your computer as your primary enabled microphone, it will call upon. It says on the screen, Jarvis is listening. It then goes into your speech recognition and it waits for you to say something. Once you say something, the user input there is what you've said. So it says print you and then what you've said. So on the screen, it'll actually show you what you've said. So if it hasn't understood your voice, you'll know. Um, it then returns what you've just said. If it can't hear you, it then has uh, uh, an error value, and that's always important. So you always need something there in case the program gets confused, because otherwise it'll just crash out. So this stops it from crashing out. And then when we get to this function here, um, it's taking your user prompt um, it's putting it through a, uh, OpenAI, and then it's giving you um, a return. So here's your uh, bit of text here that you've input, and then the output um, is here. So it says bot response. So what we're going to do is we're going to change that to Jarvis response. So that's it. That's all you have to do. That 55 lines of code will effectively do everything that you've done so far on this series. So if you think about it, the piece of code we wrote for uh, a calculator, you could just say, you know, this is my sum, work that out. OpenAI will work it out and give you a response. Um, if you wanted the weather, you don't have to go to a weather platform and get an API for the weather platform. Now you can just ask uh, OpenAI and the response that's returned will be played back to you. So um, a lot of what we've already done um, actually can be pushed to one side and replaced with this AI. Okay, so let's run it and see how it works. So let's uh, run the program and see what it does. Hi, how are you? Fine, thank you. How about you? I'm fine. How are you? Not bad. What's up? Nothing much. I'm just uh, making a YouTube video on how to program AI into my Jarvis robot. You're making a YouTube video on how to program an AI into your Jarvis robot. That's cool. 
It is cool. In fact, this program is you. Um, how does that feel? I feel great knowing that I can help people stay cool. So tell me what the weather's going to be like tomorrow in uh, Kent. The weather is going to be cloudy. Is it not going to rain tomorrow? There's no chance of rain tomorrow, so you can definitely plan on spending time outdoors. So, really simple. What, 55 lines of code, and you've got um, calculators, you've got weather, you've got um, access to the news, you, you've got everything that, that OpenAI provides. So the next thing to do is to work on the, um, the latency, because there's a little bit of a gap between uh, the call um, and the response and then um, build it into Jarvis's program because we don't want the running the chat running all the time because it'll listen to everything that's said. So we still need that call word um, to start him off. Um, and then we also need to integrate into it our um, functions for lights and other bits and pieces. So he needs to be able to recognize when I'm calling for something actually to happen, like lights to come on or a website to be called or something like that, and when I'm just asking for a conversation. Um, so that's the next thing to do, but um, this gives you a whole load of stuff to play with. Um, and actually, you can use it for anything. So you can get a, a response from your microphone um, into Python through AI, and then with that response that the AI gives back, you can literally do anything. Um, so you're going to see a lot of software popping up from uh, designers all over the place because it's, it's just too easy. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed it. Um, it's a fairly short one, um, but incredibly useful. Enjoy playing with that piece of code, and uh, let me know how you get on in the uh, in the comments. But I'll see you in the next one.